While the cities of the West prepared to celebrate 40 years of peace with fireworks, the skies of Beirut were once again filled with a more deadly cargo. More than 3,000 missiles, rockets, shells and mortar rounds crashed into residential areas of the city during the night. At least 28 people were killed and more than 100 injured. The ambulances of the Lebanese Red Cross, often manned by teenagers, were kept busy. Machine gun fire echoed through the dark streets. Once again, it seems that the Muslim Amal militia had the best of the fighting. They clashed with the Lebanese army on the outskirts of the city, the first such battle for months. But while it was the young men of the army and the various armed factions who did the fighting, most of those killed or hurt were civilians sheltering from the flying lead and steel in whatever sanctuary they could find. The army brought in tanks to try and silence the Muslim guns, but despite the presence of armor, the Amal men kept firing. The continued fighting marks yet another loss of authority by the beleaguered national government, whose days would seem to be numbered. As another chapter of Lebanon's recent dark past was opened, Christians and Muslims accused each other of committing the atrocities. The Amals claim Muslims were killed by Christian militiamen before they were driven out of the area in the wake of Israel's withdrawal. The Christians say the victims were killed by Muslims. As with so many aspects of life in this country, the truth is almost impossible to find. The remains of the bodies reveal nothing about their identity. But even if the official inquiry does come up with clues, legal justice will count for little in a country torn by civil war. Yeah, the treatment, the treatment I've, I've received so far has, has been quite... Uh, Quite good. Uh, I'm very well fed, um, probably too well fed, and, and, and possibly uh, I didn't get the exercise I normally would get. Um, <clears throat> I get two or three meals a day. Um, I have to get a, a vacuum flask of tea, uh, which lasts me most of the day. Uh, I have water supplied whenever I need it. I have a palliast to sleep on, and uh, um, I have lighting whenever I need it. Um, I'm doing a lot of writing at the present time. I've, I've done quite a bit already. The rocket-propelled grenades were brought into action as efforts to reach a ceasefire founded once more. And automatic weapons, the everyday tools of the militiamen, were joined by tanks on the ruined streets around the Green Line. They made their presence felt. While the fighters enjoyed the privilege of being armed and able to defend themselves, Civilians in the surrounding residential areas had no such protection. It was the gunmen who once more controlled the streets, and mortar and artillery shells fell on the homes of those too poor or too infirm to have fled the area around the green line that splits the city in two. The one ray of hope came from peace overtures made to Syria by the hardline Christian Phalangist militias. But the Damascus government will not agree to hold back their supporters in Lebanon unless the leaders of the Phalangists are sent into exile. While the politicians and the generals squabble, the streets of Beirut aren't safe for anyone not protected by a layer of armoured steel. Making money was once said to be the sole interest of the Lebanese, now it seems to be making war.